Hey everyone, today we're talking about temptation. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any other wild animal that Yahweh God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the trees, the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, uh, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves." So here I think we see some of the process of how uh, we're led to make bad choices, how we're led away from what God uh, wants us to do, what God knows is best for us. First, we see that this serpent sows the seeds of mistrust, right? Uh, did God really say that? You know, it, it makes you question, well, what, what did God say? Maybe it wasn't what I thought. And then it twists the truth a little bit, right? Because he says, well, did he say you can't eat from any tree? Um, and then kind of lies about the consequences, right? Said, oh, you won't die. Now, we'll get to that later of what happens when they do eat it and whether that actually is the case. And he offers something appealing, right? You'll, you'll be like gods, even though, as we've already seen, humanity is made in the image of God. That's not actually something they need to try and claim for themselves. They already have it. Ultimately, it's an attack on God's character. It's saying God is not worthy of trust. God is withholding these things from you. God is not, not as generous and not as good as you know he, you seem to think. And so they believe these lies, and the immediate result of their sin is shame. And that's depicted in the way that they recognize their nakedness. And again, we, we talked the other day about how Adam and Eve, in, in some sense, are very childlike and naive, and that's what their nakedness symbolizes. And so if like a two-year-old kid who, you know, has no shame about that sort of thing, suddenly, you know, were naked in public and instantly gave them like an adult understanding of their nakedness, what are they going to do? They're going to have the same impulse to cover up. I think what this represents, it's a picture of having to grow up too fast, right? Maybe some of this has happened to, to you, that you, because of trauma, because of bad experiences as a child, you had to grow up and experience things or learn things sooner than you should have. This is a picture of the loss of innocence, and it's never what God wanted for them. See, knowledge is good, as we talked about, but grasping knowledge too soon when we're not ready for it isn't good. Right? Driving a car is a good thing, but I'm not going to let my 10-year-old get behind the wheel of the car right now because he's not ready. And so knowledge of right and wrong is also good, but it has to be claimed on God's term and sometimes in God's timing. But we also trust that God will reveal it when we need to know it. And so now as adults living in this world we live in, we're guided by, in the truth by the Spirit, discerning God's desires with wisdom, resisting temptation.